Virgin Mary in of the Virgin Mary in the kingdom of divine will, the very last day of, of Mary's special month, the very last day of the lessons, and the absolute accumulation of this fast track way into divine will, the final day, which is the Virgin Mary's assumption into heaven. So what an amazing day. We shall start with a prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Jesus, with the dawn of each new day, through your dearest mother Mary, I renew my acceptance of this gift and I thank you with all my heart and soul. May I live every moment in your divine will. Jesus, I desire to enter into you, be one with you, and I take what I find in you. Jesus, I find in you my own life, the lives of everyone from Adam to the last one to be created, which you have perfectly redone in your divinity. I offer them to the Father with you for his glory and a perfect return of love. Amen. My Jesus, in your loving providence, you've allowed us to learn that your kingdom is now coming on earth. We can enter into this kingdom. This is what I wish to do with all my heart. I want your divine will to reign in me all day long, as it did in paradise in Adam and Eve, as it did in your home in Nazareth, in Mary with Joseph. I want your divine will to reign in me as it did in Louisa, the firstborn in the divine will in these times. I want you to animate all that I do, think my thoughts, speak my words and do my actions. I want the divine will to have complete freedom in my humanity so that at every moment of this day and night, your holy will may be done in me. I give you all the love, adoration, praise, thanksgiving, honor, glory, and reparation on behalf of the human race, especially on behalf of those who do not yet know they can enter into the kingdom of your divine will. Amen. Ever holy and indivisible trinity, I adore you profoundly. I love you intensely. Thank you perpetually for all in the heart of all. Um. Daily prayer to the Heavenly Queen for the month of May. Immaculate Queen, my Heavenly Mother, I come upon your maternal lap as your dear child to abandon myself in your arms and to entreat you with the most ardent size in this month, consecrated to you, the greatest grace of all. May you dispose me to live in the kingdom of the divine will. Holy Mother, as the queen of this kingdom, dispose me, your child, to live in it, so that it may no longer be deserted, but filled with your children. I entrust myself to you, my sovereign queen, that you may guide my steps into the kingdom of the divine will. Held tightly by your maternal hand, guide my whole being to live the unending life of the divine will. May you be a mother to me, and I shall offer to you, my mother, my own will, so that you may make it completely submissive to the divine will. And I will be sure never to leave its kingdom. So I entreat you to illuminate me and make me understand what the will of God means. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Daily aspiration of the month. In the morning, at midday and in the evening. 
that is, three times a day, let us climb upon the lap of our heavenly mother and say, my mother, I love you. Love me too. Increase in my soul the will of God. Grant me your blessing also, so that I may do all my actions under your maternal case. Day 31, the Virgin Mary's Assumption into Heaven. My dear Heavenly Mother, I am back in your maternal arms, and as I look at you, a sweet smile appears on your purest lips. Today, you are rejoicing, and it seems as if you wish to confide something yet more surprising to me, your child. Holy Mother, I entreat you to touch my mind and purify my heart with your maternal hands so that I may understand your holy lessons and put them into practice. My dearest child, today your mother rejoices. I wish to tell you of the events surrounding the day in which I finished accomplishing the divine will on earth and made my flight to heaven. There was not in me one breath, heartbeat or step in which the divine fiat did not discover its complete act. And this complete act embellished, enriched and sanctified me so much that even the angels were left enraptured. Before departing for my heavenly homeland, I returned again to Jerusalem with my beloved John. It was the last time that I would walk the earth in mortal flesh and all creation, as if realising this, prostrated itself around me. As I passed by all creation from the fish of the sea to the tiniest bird wanted to be blessed by their queen. I blessed them all and extended to them my last goodbye. Then I arrived in Jerusalem and withdrawing into the little home where John had brought me, I enclosed myself in it never to leave again. Blessed child, I began to feel within me such a martyrdom of love. My love, inflamed by the ardent yearnings to reach my son in heaven, so consumed me that my human nature fell ill with love and experienced intense deliriums and pining of pure love. Because my human nature was conceived without sin and lived completely in the divine will, the seed of natural evils was not in me. Thus I experienced neither physical illness nor the slightest malady. And if I experienced so many sorrows, they were all of the supernatural order. For such sorrows provided me with the occasion to render fruitful my maternity and to conquer many of my children. They became honours and triumphs for your heavenly mother. Do you see then, dear child, what it means to live in the divine will? It means to lose the seed of natural evils that produce not honours and triumphs, but weakness, misery and defeats. Therefore, dearest child, listen to the last words of your mother, who is about to make her flight to heaven. I cannot leave for heaven happy if I am not certain that my child will be safeguarded. So before departing, I now wish to bequeath to you my testament, leaving you the dowry of that same divine will 
that your mother possesses and that enriched me with so much grace that I became the mother of the word, the lady and queen of the heart of Jesus and the mother and queen of all creatures. Now, dear child, this is the last day of the month that is consecrated to me. I spoke to you with great love of what the divine will wrought in me, of the great good it can do, and of what it means to let oneself be dominated by it. I also spoke to you of the grave evils of the human will. Do you perhaps think that my lessons were a simple narration? By no means. When your mother speaks, she desires to enrich you. So it is with ardent love I spoke to you, and in each word I spoke, I bound your soul to the divine fiat and prepared you for you the dowry with which you might live enriched, happy and endowed with a divine power. Now that I am about to leave, accept my testament. May your soul be the paper on which I write with the gold pen of the divine will and with the ink of the ardent love that consumes me. The testimony of the dowry I leave to you. Blessed child, assure me that you will never again do your own will. Place your hand on my maternal heart and promise me that you will enclose your will in my heart so that no longer feeling your will, you will not have any occasion to do it. And I will bring your will to heaven with me as the triumph and conquest of my child. Dear child, listen to the last words of your mother as I die of pure love. Receive my last blessing as the seal of the life of the divine will that I leave in you, which will form your heaven, your sun, and your seas of love and grace. In these last moments, your heavenly mother desires to inundate you with love and pour herself out in you. And I do so in order that in your last words, you may tell me that you prefer to die and make any sacrifice than to do one act of your own will. Tell me you will do so. Tell me so, my child. Holy Mother, in my ardent sorrow, I tell you in tears, if you see that I am about to do one act of my own will, make me die to it. Come and take my soul into your arms to heaven. And from my heart, I promise you, I vow to never ever do my own will. Blessed child, how happy I am. I would not have told you of my departure for heaven if you would not have reassured me that you, my child, would allow yourself to be endowed with the divine will. Be certain that from heaven I will not leave you. I shall not leave you as an orphan, but I will guide you in all things. From your least to your greatest needs, all you have to do is invoke me and immediately I will come and offer you my motherly assistance. Now, dear child, listen closely to what your tender mother wishes to tell you. I was already ill with love. In a prodigious way, the divine fiat consoled the apostles and me as well by allowing all the apostles except one to surround me as I was about to make my flight to heaven. In acknowledging that these were my last moments on earth, all experienced heartache and wept bitterly and I consoled them. 
in a special way I entrusted to all of them the nascent holy church and imparted my maternal blessing to them that conveyed to their hearts the grace of paternal love towards souls. My dear son, who could no longer be without his mother, paid me continual visits by going back and forth from heaven to earth. As I breathed my last out of pure love in the endless sea of the divine will, my son received me in his arms and took me to heaven among the angelic choirs who praised me as their queen. I can say that heaven emptied itself to come to me and everyone in heaven celebrated. In gazing at me, all remained enraptured and with one accord exclaimed, who is she who comes from the land of exile, completely immersed in her Lord, all beautiful and all holy, bearing the queen's scepter? So great, so great is she that the heavens have lowered themselves to receive her. No other creature has entered these heavenly regions so adorned, so striking, and so powerful. Indeed, she has supremacy over all. Now, my child, do you wish to know who she is, to whom all heaven sang hymns, and who caused all heaven to be enraptured? It is I. She who never did her will. The divine will abounded in me to such an extent that it extended in my soul the most beautiful heavens, the most refulgent suns, along with seas of beauty, love and holiness, with which I could administer light to all. To all I could administer love and sanctity while enclosing everything and everyone within my heavenly soul. All this was the work of the divine will operating in me. The divine will accomplished in me the great prodigy whereby I was the only creature to enter heaven with the kingdom of the divine will established in its soul. Now, in gazing upon me, the whole heavenly court stood amazed. For in beholding me, they discovered the heavens, and in gazing upon me again, they discovered the sun. And unable to take their gaze away from me, they discovered more deeply within me the sea, as well as the clearest earth of my humanity, adorned with the most beautiful flowerings. And enraptured, they exclaimed, how beautiful she is. She has centralized everything within herself. In her, nothing is lacking. Among all the works of her creator, she is the only complete work of all creation. Now, blessed child, this was the first feast of the divine will celebrated in heaven to honor the very many prodigies wrought by the divine will within a soul. Therefore, upon my entrance to heaven, the whole heavenly court celebrated all the beautiful and great things that the divine fiat can do within a soul. Since then, this feast has not been repeated. And this is why your mother ardently yearns for the divine will to reign in souls in an absolute manner. I yearn for souls to allow the divine will to repeat in them its great prodigies and its stupendous feasts. Mother of love, sovereign empress, from heaven in which you gloriously reign, turn your merciful gaze to heaven, to earth, and have pity on me. Oh, how I long for my dear mother, as my life is empty without you. Indeed, without my mother, 
everything in my life is unstable. So do not leave me halfway along my journey, but continue to guide me until all things in me have converted into the will of God so that, so that it may establish its life and its kingdom. Today to honour me, recite three glorias to the most holy trinity, to thank God in my name for the great glory he gave me when I was assumed into heaven and ask me to come to assist you at the moment of your death. Heavenly Mother, enclose my will within your heart and infuse within my soul the Son of the Divine Will. <laughs> 